It's true. I saw your face in crowded place. place. I don't, I don't know, know what to do. do. I'd rather be, be with, with you. you. I think it makes it better that he sounds ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like it's not like it's some hot guy <laughs> singing that. Don't say that. You know that he's like the president of his own hate club. James Blunt? Yeah. Wait, what do you mean he's the president of his own hate club? He's just like, yeah, I make pretty cringe shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got to try that. <laughs> president of Gabby Jordan Brown's hate club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like my hate club... I I, th I think sometimes uh, the difference is he actually has members. Hey, hey. yeah. I, I I used to get. Um, do you remember Form Spring? Remember, <laughs> you created it. <laughs> I made sweet love to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, tell her hello. Oh yeah, I put the spring in her step. Ooh, look. Yeah, I know that's true. But Form Spring was this. It was kind of like Ask FM. It was like a, uh, -huh. uh this anonymous site where you could send in. Um, things to people like anonymously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, all the cool girls would get like bullied. They'd be like, "You're a slut," or like, "Oh, you fucked this guy, didn't you?" And when I got a form spring, everyone was like, "Hey, Gabby, lol, it's Patrick. Love you." And I was like, "Fuck, somebody bully me. I want to feel cool." That's funny. Yeah. Welcome to like, Two Dozy Meerkats. No one's calling me gay. <laughs> Nothing to distract me from being gay. <laughs> Welcome to Two Dozy Meerkats, Welcome where we're going to call Meerkats. each other gay the entire time. Oh, call each other. We'll just be gay we'll the whole time. We'll just be gay. Yeah, teach me how. Um, <laughs> Do you like men? No. Well, then you're kind of fucked. Strike one. Strike one. Do you... Let's, let's think of like the 80s way. Like, do you like Madonna? No. <laughs> you should start. <laughs> Liking Madonna? Ooh yeah! Wait, are you? I like her song, um, uh, four minutes with Justin Timberlake. I love that song. We only got four minutes to save the world. I love that song. Yeah, but if I had four minutes to save the world, I wouldn't be singing about it. Oh, I just wouldn't save the world. You just kind of maybe that's the irony. What I'm hearing is that I have four minutes to live. What would you do? I'm not gonna save the world in that time. What would you do? Four minutes to live. Probably jacket. Can you do it in four minutes? <laughs> Try right now. <laughs> what would you do? <sighs> I'd eat something, to be honest. I'd eat like a nice slice of pizza and then what do you don't what if you don't have pizza at hand? I'd kill myself. <laughs> or okay, for, wait, you have four minutes left? Yeah. I would listen to the song four minutes. By Madonna and Justin Timberlake. It's only a two minute thirty song or something. I think. Yeah, I re I remember it doesn't it doesn't hit for. So what minutes. do you so what do you do with the final like minute thirty? Play it again. But then you don't get to finish. Um, I would skip to the end. Oh, all right. But yeah, just kind of skip through. Nice parts I like. Yeah. You know. Okay. 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 That's a good answer. No, you. you I like when they that. go. You feel it. It must be real. Mm -hmm. I would just skip everything else and just play that bar over and over again. Yeah. You feel it. It must be real. Brrr, you feel it, and just over and over again till I die. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Oh, four minutes. Did you see? Wait, did you see the video of Madonna in like Germany going? Okay, everyone fart. <laughs> it's one of the i didn't know about it until i watched the big fat quiz of the year and it was a thing that happened during her concert she was like i think we have enough people that like if i told you all to fart enough of you would and did it happen i don't remember it wasn't notable okay so everyone was silent but deadly <laughs> that's too bad it's so funny I love that she went that route. I'm like, now you're my kind of girl. I mean, I can't fart on command. And I feel like if someone asked me to fart, yeah, it would just oh, be no. smelly. I, I don't know if I would like to fart on command. There's a dude on Jackass who can shit on command. Dudes on Jackass. I mean, they just created Jackass for men who have no real working life skills. And me. And you. I love Jackass. I love Jackass so much. I saw the movie like uh, the. It's so creative. Yeah. They're so creative. I think it's honestly like sketch comedy, but with like testing their physical boundaries and limits. Mm, and yes. I think my favorite part about it was like watching this one guy was getting hit in the balls over and over again. Oh, yeah. That, that was that was hard to watch. I that was do. my favorite. And the most part. recent one. 
Yeah, but but Oh no, I wince. I couldn't look at that. But my but my real favorite part about that was that same guy was terrified of spiders. And I was oh, like, yeah. fear is so weird. This guy can get hit in the balls and feel kind of okay about it. Mm. But his biggest fear is spiders. Yes. Dude, no, so, so stuff affects us so differently. I know. Wait, so I, some one thing I want to ask you because I recently I've gotten into this uh, YouTube channel of Van Neistat. He's Casey Neistat's brother. Who is that? He um. Do you know who Casey Neistat is? No. He's like a YouTuber. There's I know a Casey lot. means stat. <laughs> Neistat. Oh, I'm so back. I will shove my foot in your vagina. And I welcome it. And I've been actually wanting that kind of the whole time. It's kind yeah. of been the end game of this pod. Anyway, they're like they're two filmmaker brothers. Uh, they had an HBO show for a while. They're both they're both like filmmakers. Casey became like a really big YouTuber. And then in the last like few years, Van was like, all right, I've been like we're being like a filmmaker for hire. I want to have my own kingdom. I want and he creates these incredibly beautiful videos about how he uh he calls his youtube channel the spirited man and he tries to be a spirited man and show how to and what that means to him in various aspects of his life and he's just really good um i've gotten i totally forgot what the point of me bringing him up was you were watching his channel yeah i was watching his channel and what were we talking about before God damn, my brain is shit. <laughs> jackass, 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 oh, spiders, yes, yes, yes. Yes, and this, oh, yes, no, thank you so much. Okay, so, but he made a video about being an object visualizer, about that being how his brain is organized and how it works. Because, you know, there are people that, um, there are people that uh, think in words and then people that think in pictures and yes. two broad uh, yeah. chops, you yeah. know? Uh, like, do you enjoy uh, IKEA directions? Do yes, you, they make yeah. sense to you. Okay, yes. yes. Then you are like me. You're yeah. probably an object visualizer. Whereas there are other people that are like, no, no, no. I need it to be written out. I need the direction. I don't think in objects. I think in, uh, I think in hymns. Mm. Yeah. I don't think in objects. I think of uh, women with agency. Ooh, yeah. What a cool guy. I'm always thinking about women with agency. <laughs> 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 people ask what do you think about it i'm like oh susan b anthony thinking about her mm. <laughs> susan bitch anthony <laughs> <laughs> susan baton anthony mm. Ooh. yeah yeah baton anthony she was kind of racist right yeah oh very much so that's why i'm always thinking about her yeah she and i kind of like <laughs> yeah you <laughs> Yeah, go on. Name your name your favorite race. No. Name my favorite race. Okay. Cross country. Yeah, cross country. Um, what are the other races? Decathlon. Uh, oh, uh, tortoise and the hare. Yes. Yeah. That was a good race. Um, fifty yard dash. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Venezuelans. Yes, uh, I was gonna say uh, any Asians. <laughs> kind of just indiscriminately. Oh, I watched this video about um, how baseball took over Japan. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it didn't like take over, right? But it's popular there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's so crazy because, okay, American players will practice for like four hours a day. And then the games are like two hours or something. Mm-hmm. Japanese players in high school will practice like seven to eight hours a day. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, one of the most famous Japanese baseball players, Ichiro, said that he like had five to six hours to hang out with friends the entire year. <laughs> and also, they will throw like 150 pitches like every two days, which is for context, American pitchers will throw like 100 pitches every five days. Oh my God. They're also, they're expected to cry after a loss. If they don't cry, it's seen as a sign of disrespect. Um, coaches will like. This is manipulative and I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my roommate was watching it too and she was like, uh, you know, this is why they're so much better than us. <laughs> and I was watching it like, USA, USA. I mean, yes, but th- it's, it's not just them being, it's them putting the work in. 
yeah also the coaches will like beat the crap out of players if they like make errors or oh, something no. and one time an american player like watched like the shortstop get beaten up by his coach and he was like are you okay like if you want i'll go with you to the police and i'll vouch that this happened and the shortstop was like no it is an honor for me to serve such a great man and then i was like this is why they don't talk about their feelings <laughs> you know? god damn yeah but it was it but this it was is intense it was interesting too though because on the flip side mm -hmm. the japanese games in the like uh like league that they're that's considered like their yeah. highest league are way more fun oh they have cheer what makes them more fun they have cheering squads of men oh, i love this and the men train like as hard as the baseball squads for cheering i love this and they're wait are they are they in are they in skirts um i don't think so but there there's strike what strike two strike strike two yeah usa but there's also there's like an improv team that comes out on the field sometimes and throws the first pitch and for context in japanese culture in these games improv like improv is good <laughs> yeah, we're imagining a world where improv is good. So there's, it's supposed to be in American culture. You throw the first pitch, and there's no batter at the plate. You just throw it to a person behind the plate. But in Japanese culture, if you throw the first pitch, there's supposed to be a batter at the plate who pretends to miss at the ball, and that's the ritual. But when okay. the improv team comes out, the batter will actually hit the ball, and then they get into a fake fight with the person who throws the first pitch, and then the fake fight escalates, and then it ends with them kissing each other on the mouth which kind of rocks all right that's a good bit that's a great bit that's a great thing to open with these games are so fun also the food is obviously amazing at all the stadiums oh for sure like just like gas stations they have the have you seen like videos of them showing you like what they have at like a 7-eleven and it's like a gorgeous plated meal oh i want to go so bad yeah Two it looks knows, amazing. Two Nosy Meerkats Weeb Edition. We take Japan. Oh. <laughs> I oh, would love. I would. Oh, that just. That's a great vacation slash idea. That's great. I would love to take Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds weird when you say it. Somebody else said that, I'm sure. But. Mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'd love take to... my Japan, please. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to take Japan out to a nice meal. Mm. And tell it how much I love it. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's great. Where do you want to take Japan? Where would I take Japan? To Japan. <laughs> hey, Japan, you ever heard of this place called Japan? <laughs> you should go. It's beautiful. <laughs> you should tell a Japanese person, hey, uh, have you ever have been you met Japan? <laughs> <laughs> they have these crazy things in gas stations. Not sure if you know. <laughs> you go. Japan. Go to Japan. I do love a classic 7-Eleven, an American 7-Eleven. Mm. I like how, I like how terrible it is. Are you? What do you? What do you get at a 7-Eleven? Um, depends. Sometimes I. You get, get the, depends underwear. Damn, you're I old. Get, I get. No, I get. I be dabbing depend. You're dabbing depend. I'm crushing it. I'm crushing it today. You need some gabapentin. Oh, that's what I fed to the 22 year old cat. I was cat sitting oh my god cats live too long i'll say it <laughs> Are you, lucas is gonna kill cats i'm not gonna i'm not gonna kill it but i think there should be a policy <laughs> okay authoritarian yeah a policy oh i mean it was living too long this cat was so old it was like i was ultimately doing cat hospice care to make its life easier oh it was so cute and then uh did it, it did it cough up hairballs or was it too tired it was too tired oh at one point, we went over to the house, and it was me and my then girlfriend. And mm -hmm. uh, Sylvie said um, to the owner, "Oh my God, this cat looks like Father Time." And the owner goes, "Don't say that; it'll never die." And then a week later, <laughs> obviously, the cat, it the cat died. Oh, so oh she's good. <laughs> <laughs> what that she predicted its death? Well, yeah. If it wasn't doing well, you don't yeah. want to. You don't want a cat to suffer. I don't want a cat to suffer. Yeah, depends on the cat. Garfield should suffer. Oh, what did what did Garfield do? I mean, I love Mondays, so I can't believe. Mm. I mean, it's Monday today. Yeah, that reminds me, my mom's cat just died. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And she was a really sweet cat. She was really, really sweet. Her name was Rosie. How old was Rosie? We don't know. She was uh, she was a stray, and my mom took her in for and she with my mom for a couple of years. Mm. Sweetest cat in the world. Very cuddly. 
very easygoing, would, would drool everywhere. That was the only drawback. Mm. But this cat was a sweetheart. But it sounds like you didn't want it to live. Oh, no, I did. This cat wasn't, this cat wasn't like on death's door. I mean, eventually it was, but, <laughs> but like for a while it looked great. <laughs> she was, so, oh, I'm sad this cat died. She was so hot. Yeah. <laughs> this cat was so skinny. I like a thick cat. I do like a thick cat as well. Mm. My, I, I, miss, love a, I love a fat cat. Oh, I, I miss my old roommate's cat, Washington. It was 25 pounds. Damn. Washington was a massive so cat. big. I want to get a cat and name it Duck. That'd be good. I think it's a great cat name. Yeah. Yeah. You should get a duck and name it. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not getting a duck. I'm, na- I'm getting a cat and naming it Duck. Yeah, but you should get a duck to be friends with the cat and name it Dog. <laughs> And then you should get a dog and name it Penis to Milo. Penis to Milo. That's right. Penis to Milo. I got that great, from Mad TV, I think. Uh, Penis to Milo, the great jazz musician. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. sure you could make up any name and it would be like a jazz musician. Oh, yeah. yeah Lank, but, Lamp McDoodle. Lamp McDoodle? No, that's. No, that's. No, 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 no. That's a farmer. Ooh. Okay. Lamp McDoodle is. Any Mick, I, I immediately go farmer because of Old McDonald. I don't know if you know. I think um, this is a good new bit, though, to, like, ask people at open mics, like, be like, I've been listening to this new musician, and then just make someone up. <laughs> well, that's like your amazing uh, Halloween costume uh, slash bit. Oh, where you pretended God, to Montana be Sunsets. Mont- and everyone was like, yeah, I think I know that. It's like a lesbian love story that you made up. I think that's such a good idea. That is so funny. <gasps> It was so mean of us. For those who haven't heard on another episode, my best friend and I dressed as characters from a movie that didn't exist that we made up called Montana Sunsets, a nineteen seventies queer movie. It was like the precursor to Brokeback Mountain. It's that's it's such a good idea. Oh, I signed my students Brokeback Mountain this week uh, to read. Yeah, I don't. I genuinely did not know it was a book. It was a short story. I see. Yeah. Okay. Which, it's really good. It doesn't deviate too much from the movie. How, did they? Well, Except they're both. Uh, uh, at the end of it, they go, "Yeah, this gay thing was just a phase." Is that actually what they say? No. In the, oh, I because I haven't seen the movie either. That's like at the end of the L word, where they all are like, "Yeah, we should go back to men." <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. They all die. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> thank God. That is- that's funny i i it's it's a weird thing where i need to see more of the l word and i yes. also need to never see it no again. you need to see more of the l word you need to we need to do another recap every time you've ever showed me a show you love it's terrible yes that's correct you haven't once showed me a show that's actually good why would i waste my time we can find good beautiful tragic comedic uh, elements of real life speaking of tragic and comedic stuff we should recap january because this is that we're we're recording this on january 29th yes it's right at the end we've had an incredible month yeah it's been it's january 29th which means january has been uh 84 days long yes yes there's so many months in this month the, at the beginning of this month i was in south africa which is crazy so much has happened okay. i know that's the only thing that makes sense about you <laughs> that i was in south africa or that i'm Obviously. racist your words <laughs> i told yeah i'm i'm racist i'm real again i'm really partial to tur- tortoise and the hare yeah it's my favorite race yeah that's what you call them <laughs> these tortoises and hares don't need finish to this stay away from the border oh i was reminded recently by the new girl i'm seeing that um uh trump when he was talking about immigrants said the most iconic phrase ever <laughs> recorded which is he said they're not sending their best i remember that that man has such a way with words he's i I just i envy that confidence i want to see trump versus alia banks yeah in a debate i need to see it can you imagine trump versus abby lee miller i need it i need all of it there's a lot of people he'd be oh (laughs) Ooh. I was gonna say Trump against Michael Green, <laughs> but we can't just we we can't go too inside baseball with no, this podcast because we, we do it enough already. Yeah, Michael Green is a, is another great comedian in New York. You'll see him at You'll some. You'll see point. him at some point. Yeah. Okay, January recap. What's first? Okay, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. First of all, hey, I'm happy to see a beautiful plus size woman thriving. As always, 
she and I have a special bond in that. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Um, and that you also killed your mom. Yeah. Yeah. I actually also killed her mom. Oh. Yeah. So. Sort of a body double situation. Yeah. She kind of like we kind of took over for each other. She used to be a Brooklyn comedian. Mm. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Yeah. Oh wow. What happened? Falling out again. Fall- <laughs> Yeah, we had a real falling out. Oh my god! Roast battle gone wrong. Uh, how good do you think Gypsy Rose Blanchard's uh, boyfriend? But no, excuse me, husband. They got married. They, they got married while she was in prison. Um, how good do you? Because like she said, hey, he's hitting this every night, and the D is fire. Mm. How good is is the penis? Do you think? I think any penis can be good when it's the only person you're having sex with. You've never met my mother-in-law. <laughs> mother-in-law strap goes crazy <laughs> when the mother-in-law straps up. <laughs> I hate my bitch mother-in-law. She always wants to peg me. <laughs> I love mother-in-law jokes. <laughs> I love them so much. Throw one in there. Yeah. What do you think? What, do you think it's good, D? I think, I don't think he could not have good D because he married her while she was in prison. He kept up the relationship going and he's, he is so down that I, that like, I don't think it's possible for him not to be a caring partner. Hmm. You know, I think that. The only way this makes sense is that he's asking her, what do you like? What do you dislike? He's doing everything he possibly can to be the best partner possible. That's interesting. It's crazy to me that like the what you're what you're suggesting with that hypothesis is Mm. the people who write letters to people in jail and fall in love with people in jail are actually the best lovers. So the way to fall in love is to go to jail. Yeah. Well, it's it's well, it's like this, you know, like let's say that you are let's say specifically you're a man in prison. OK, uh, that would never happen. No. Hey, love is love. <laughs> let's say you're a man in prison. All right. And you have a um, you have a feel female admirer who like visits you all the time, sending you letters. She loves you. She marries you while you're in prison. Mm-hmm. Do you think that when you get out of prison that her when she gives you head, she's not giving her all? You're so right. Yes. This is what I mean. The trick is go to prison and and up the yearning. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah, it's really about yearning in the in the same way that like all the best gay movies are like we can't see each other for years, so like the sex is so bomb when we see each other. Anticipation is just inherently sexy and horny. Yes. Anticipation is inherently horny. Not enough yearning nowadays. Yes. You know, we're all We're too immediate. We're on our phones. We're all on our freaking phones. <laughs> We're all on our freaking phones. Nobody's yearning anymore. <laughs> I, I want you, listeners, I want you to go out and text five people every day I yearn for you. There we go. That's exactly. <laughs> no, but. Th- we should do a text or drink, but the automated text is just I yearn for you. Yes. And we just pick a contact. That, oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> that's really good. But yeah, no, it's just like if you put yourself in his shoes, given his behavior, like pre her release. Here, select a contact. Oh my God. No, no. I chose the name of a a, a bigger comedian. <laughs> Absolutely not. Drink, drink, Who drink. Is Who is wonderful. A wonderful, wonderful guy. Drink, drink, drink. Well, the other options on this screen were my aunt, a girl I used to hook up with, my cousin, <laughs> and my old gay coworker. <laughs> so I don't yearn for any of them, but you were saying. Uh, no, yeah. It's just like if I put myself in his shoes... And I do all of the behavior that that he did before she was let out of prison. I would imagine that when he the when the when she got out, he was like prepared for it. He like planned out incredible dates, really just like made like really made the most of it, you know? Yeah. And I don't think it's possible that he didn't. I agree. So go to jail and find you a lover go to jail and fi- and sort out the the strong from the chaff or, wh- or whatever that phrase is yeah okay so there's her i mean honestly like i'm happy for her. i feel like her mom was crazy and she's living a nice life now yeah 
Um, what about the Jew tunnels? Oh my God. I keep talking about that with people. <laughs> it's just, is there anything that just made you smile more? No, I'm so happy for them. They're, I, they were having such a nice time in there. Yeah. Why should we be upset? Oh, I don't think anyone's upset. The only one who, well, I, I want to know who is the guy who was like, I was literally hearing Yiddish behind my, yeah. f- behind my walls <laughs> under floorboards or something like that dude, I want I want to interview him. Poor guy. Everyone was like, you anti Vindicated prick. guy. Yeah. Vindicated. vindicated. Yeah. He should date Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Is there anyone who should get to use a Jewish slur more? hundred percent. He, because he had a legitimate ordeal. Everyone said, oh, you're anti-Semitic for that. And now it's proven that he yeah. was not being anti-Semitic at all. He should be allowed to. He should be allowed to have a little anti-Semitism as a treat. Yeah. As a treat. Just a little. Yeah. I think um, the Jew tunnels to me are interesting because, you know, you want to party in there. Like you want to go down there and hang out. But you have a feeling that there's serious business going on there. Mm. Like if you showed up with the wine. Now that's anti-Semitic of you. If you showed up with the wine and the weed. Like do you think they wouldn't just like be praying? The wine and the weed? Yeah you show up with wine and weed. That was so lyrical the way you said it. Well, the wine and the weed. I was doing it biblically so that they'll like me. <laughs> I have the wine and the weed. I do remember, and this was, this was something kind of fucked up. Okay. My friends and I used to do in college, but um, there, I've talked about this maybe before on the pod, but okay, um, there was a group of students at Hunter called mm. the Hunter Hillel, and they were these very repressed Jews, a lot of whom were from like Orthodox families, really celebrated Shabbat. They were so socially awkward. They would go to my dorms and they would get like crazy messy drunk off of wine. But they would do it on the 13th floor, which was the only floor that had like a barricade. Uh, that Because like it's a, unlucky. Yes. It was like a clear. I don't know why, actually, but there was like a clear barricade uh, in the to the common room. So you okay. could see through it. OK. <laughs> my, fr- my friends and I who are Jewish, my friends and I. <laughs> We would, we would watch through the barricade as they got progressively more drunk, and I would be like, "We're at the Jew Zoo." <laughs> I felt a little bad, but then we'd hate. Well, you know, sometimes. Do you hate my career? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, it was a joke. Sometimes, I don't know, yeah. Sometimes we would hang out with them. They were lovely people. And then here's another funny thing. Because it was the Sabbath, and they were like, a lot of them were really religious and yeah. commuted, didn't live in the dorms. They would like get so drunk that they couldn't go home because they because they couldn't open it or turn a knob. They couldn't turn a knob. They couldn't take public transport. They would ah. have to stay over at the dorms. But the dorms had a really strict visitor policy. So mm-hmm. they would have to like hide in people's rooms. And then public safety was looking around knocking for hidden Jews <laughs> in the dorms. At some point I was like, if you're public safety, you just take the L. Like I will not be like, I am looking for Jews. <laughs> Y'all got any hiding? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my you God. You know who this clip needs to find is that black Jewish girl who got mad at Romy. <laughs> Raven. Raven. Raven Simone. Wait, is her name? I, I may, I, I, that may not be her name. Of course not. Raven Simone is that so Raven. No, I know Raven Simone, <laughs> but I... But I think her name... No, I, her name is Raven. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> yikes. <laughs> Zoinks. Yikes. Yikes. Yoink. Yoink. Um, no. Oh. I will say that is a... Do you, What do you think the effect of... Because like on the Sabbath, you know, you're not supposed to press any buttons. You're not supposed to do any work. What do you think that effect has on not just individuals, but a community over time? Does that make you inherently a problem solver? Because like you, because inherently you have a conflict. Yeah. Because like you have, you have needs on the day. You have to, you know, you turn on lights, you turn them off, you use this, you use that. It's, what do you, what do you think that does to you? 
I mean, I'm not sure. Like, I have complicated feelings around it because... I mean, I know when I went to Israel, like, half the people there were like, yeah, everything's close on the Sabbath, but, like, none of us are religious, so we're all bored. Yeah. Um, And then I know that, like, my crazy aunt is, like, super Chabad, and... Can you uh, explain to the listeners what that means? Uh, Chabad, By listeners, I mean me. Chabad is, like, Orthodox plus. Oh. Or I, th- I think. I mean, I'm not totally sure. Chabad is, like, the curls and the wigs and stuff. Okay. What do, do Orthodox not do the curls and the wigs? I think it's. I actually. Like, I always just associated that with like Hasidic. I need to look up exactly what Chabad. I think Orthodox is like the branch of Judaism that Chabad is, but Chabad is like a community. Okay. Chabad meaning, um, Chabad also known as Lubavitch. Is it oh, Orthodox yeah. Jewish Hasidic dynasty? Dynasty. What well, Lubavitch? That that is a Hasidic. That yeah. is like one of the Hasidic. It's one of the groups, world's yeah. most b- b- best known Hasidic movements. Yeah, it's because they're they're the friendliest. They are the friendliest. Yeah. The Lubavitch ones. They they are they're like they go out. They actually try to talk to people yeah. outside of the community, and they're like a little bit more plugged into popular culture, and they they're very nice. Yeah. Well, my aunt sucks. Okay. So <laughs> she. I don't know. It's kind of like... That's okay. People are allowed to suck. People are allowed to suck. I feel like it used to be that if like my grandmother needed some... Now she's very good with my grandmother, thank God. But like it used to be if my grandmother needed something, she'd be like, oh, it's a Sabbath. Like I can't come. And it's kind of like at some point, doesn't your duty to like another person kind of override your duty to the religion? Mm. I feel like any kind of like intense religious belief, like at some point can just get in the way of doing your duties to another human being which is what drives me crazy about the ultra orthodox in Mm. the same way like i feel about like people who are ultra christian as well you know but at the same time i don't know i mean i'm sure there is some problem solving around it but unfortunately i also think sometimes it can make people more insular Mm. like um my aunt who now again just clarify is like very good and watches my grandmother full time. Um, when I was in South Africa, my aunt like uh, was taking a night off for the Sabbath and I was taking care of my grandmother and she points to this number on the fridge and is like, you can call this number anytime if anything happens. Like if you're Jewish, they'll take care of you. And I thought that was nice. But at the same time, I was like, shouldn't there be a number where if anyone calls, you can take care of them? Like, uh, what? <sighs> I, I, I think sometimes the ultra religious Chabad or like ultra Zionists are so insular that like, I mean, people like study the Holocaust every single day and all it makes them think is more about how the Jews should win. Right. And people forget that like the Holocaust is just happening now, but on the other side mm-hmm. and I don't understand how people can't see the irony to it, but I think there is a certain amount of insularness. With the Holocaust happening on the other side, talk more about that. Like Palestine. Yes. Like how Palestine is a fucking genocide, right? Yes, it is a genocide. Israel is trying to kill people in Gaza. And I think that there's so many like Chabad scholars who are so in their own tight little bubble that they just have no concept of what's happening. Mm. And that drives me that drives me crazy about Chabad and it's something that I've struggled with because it makes me feel at odds with my own religion. Yeah. I love being Jewish. I love like Judaism. I love the things that it's given to me, but I hate Zionism. Yeah. You know, it's, do you feel like, do you feel like Zionism is sort of like a community wide, but obviously bigger than, do you feel like it's a community wide trauma response? Yeah, I'd say so. But also Zionism's kind of been part of the religion forever. Like the idea that Jews should have a homeland, like there should be a Jewish homeland. Okay. The problem with Israel is I feel like it was like Disneyland, <laughs> right? It was like, whoa, I, I wish we all had a Jewish homeland. Okay, let's just make one. Mm. Like Israel was also like, apparently they were like optioning other countries for it. Yeah, like it Madagascar. Yeah. It's like you can't just move somewhere people already are if you were somewhere 3,000 years ago. And now I think Israel exists because it exists because people live there. But the fucking settlements just like don't belong. No. 
to Israel. Like when I was in Israel, at one point we were like going down a long path and my phone said, welcome to Jordan. Like T-Mobile doesn't give a shit. They're not yeah. Z- Zionist or anti-Zionist. They're just telling me where they think the land is. It's not Israel, you know? Yeah. Anyway, that's how I feel. But the, but the Jew tunnels are nice. Because yes, they're just separate from all the of Jew that. tunnels. They just they were a nice thing to to experience. Yeah, it's it's nice to see. It's nice to see a stereotype come true. <laughs> and to, it was just fun. It was fun. I do think it's crazy that people think the Jew tunnels are proof that Jews rule the world. It's like if Jews no, ruled no, no, the no, world, that's, that's, they'd be above ground. Yeah. <laughs> That that is that is hilarious. That is really funny. I feel like it's true. Yeah, but on but like talking a little bit about like about Israel and Palestine, like I I would say it is because I'm Jewish that I am very clearly pro Palestinian. Yeah, it is because I understand like what has happened to like our people over the centuries, but also in the past hundred years, and that the I it is understanding that that the idea of what is happening to uh, Palestinians in Gaza is is so horrible. It, the and the idea of being the perpetrator of that is so sickening. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, not that I am part of that group and I'm not Israeli. Um, but like, but the way that it is, the way they have hijacked the Jewish identity to be that to be that identity. Yeah. That is yeah. And I don't want to take away from like there's so many Israelis who are anti-government. B- mostly, well, most people hate the Bibi Netanyahu yeah. and the, what the government is doing. That is that is the horrible thing is that most Palestinians also hate Hamas. Most Israelis yeah. hate uh, the Israeli government. It is just two forces attacking and harming just the people. I know, I know. It's it's just terrible to me because like I feel like sometimes it's very hard to find common ground with other jews and it's really sometimes divided me from like other jewish people i love that Mm. like i think people are just totally trapped in this mental cult of zionism i also think there is a weird belief sometimes jews have where they're like why don't the palestinians just leave you know i think that people like think essentially that all muslims are the same they're like Mm. why don't they go to one of the other 22 is islamic countries and it's like we don't know them. Yeah. <laughs> Who those, are they? Those... <laughs> hey, uh, Israel kind of said we could roll up here. Oh, that's weird. We didn't. We didn't know. Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, wait, what are the other countries? They're so far. Yeah, they're just like, okay, well, <laughs> yes. if people don't have the resources to, like, drink water and eat food, like, how are they just going to pack up in, Get on like, Delta. A nice like... suitcase, yeah. Oh, we're flying, we're flying spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I remember I was talking to my sister about this, mm-hmm. and she was like, the whole leaving thing is crazy, because what? It should just be a cultural genocide instead of a physical one? Mm. We should just let our home. You, people should just let their homeland be ravaged so that they avoid physical damage. Like, it makes no sense to stop bombing civilians. Yeah. Stop bombing fucking hospitals, dude. I don't know how this isn't like fully just like accepted logic by people. And yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know. And I, I personally like, I've never like posted online about any of this stuff, but I think it's pretty clear to everyone where I stand. And I just like, don't really care about losing followers or anything mm. for it. No. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What makes me also so sad is how many like Jewish comedians have become like so staunchly I know. just like obsessively pro Israel and like doing so much to like raise money for as if Israel needs more money. <laughs> yeah. You should put that money into the tunnels and build them something nice. I want to see. Okay, did you ever play Club Penguin? No. <laughs> We've been through this so many times. Well, I thought maybe you would have tried it as an adult. <laughs> they should make. Okay, on Club Penguin, you could build your igloo and make it look really nice. You could put a disco floor in the middle of it. They should make the juke tunnels <laughs> customizable. <laughs> like igloos. Yo, beautiful. It's true. <laughs> Jews, be more like the penguins. Be more like Club be Penguin. Be more like Club Penguin. 
I can't believe you just said that. Well, I said a lot of awesome shit too. What happened? Yeah. What else happened in January? What else happened in January? Okay, let's let's try to. Let's oh, Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey happened. Oh yeah, well, that oh, was that, well, that was a while that was ago. Been, that's been in the in the zeitgeist for a minute. Yeah, but I feel like I see it on Twitter like every day. It's like Travis. I don't think that was a January thing though. When did they get together? When did well, when did they go public though? That's the question. Let's see. Um, Cause they're headed to the Super Bowl now. Yeah, uh, Taylor's. Quite, yeah, mother uh, is mothering. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Travis. I wish there was like a Wikipedia about like when they first got together. I mean, it's probably just on Taylor's Wikipedia. It's oh, probably just on good it. Good point. And, yeah, you and then you'll just find like her whole dating history, and then you just go to the bottom, and you'll find uh, Travis Kelsey. Taylor Swift. Okay. Um, oh, I recently, for some reason kind of related to this i stalked carly Kloss's instagram okay and uh i saw she posted a photo of her husband that was like here's how josh kushner became a billionaire and the caption was so proud josh kushner josh kushner is, is jared kushner's brother or? J- jared kushner's brother and carly Kloss's husband oh yeah Yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, maybe it's life and career. Um, you think she's ever driven Jared Kushner home? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, just like after a dinner, just be like, yeah, I'll drive, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Carly Claus has ever driven a car. She began dating American football player Travis Kelsey in 2023. Mm-hmm. I think it was like November. From what this article okay. says. Okay, basically January. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. January news. I think they seem lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I have no opinion. Do you have yeah, an opinion? I, don't, I have no opinion about their relationship. I hope they're together forever, though. <laughs> Me too. I feel like uh, I... It's time that someone made Travis an honest woman. <laughs> I feel like they must be into some pegging stuff. I think that they have the most vanilla fucking like copy and paste fucking really <laughs> just like yeah. a missionary all day kind of vibe. Oh yeah. You don't think Travis hits it from behind? I think they tried it once. <laughs> <laughs> I think they tried it once and she was like, no. And he was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> the problem is she's too long. <laughs> like making love to a noodle (laughs) for a musician i feel like where is her rhythm like in the way she moves and operates you know her era 404 rhythm not found (laughs) where is her rhythm in like how she operates just in life yeah because she's just this gangly awkward woman like i feel like there's not a lot of like inherent rhythm to her i mean she would I don't never know. date a black person. That I believe. Would? Wait, what is the would coming? No, she wouldn't date a black person. She wouldn't. I think she wouldn't. I think she would. Well, it hasn't happened yet. I mean, I mean, what if it's happened just behind the scenes? And what if, what if this person, whoever, was uh, Lou was like, I'm so sorry. I just, I do not, I do not need this limelight. I, I. I like you and respect you, but this, I don't think is a good, like, and, and that maybe she wanted to have something, but it, it didn't happen because this person was like, I just, I don't think this is going to be good for me. I don't know. It I could just, happen because she's, she is the biggest pop star in the world. I just would be shocked. Like, I'm sure plenty of black guys have shot their shot and I just don't think it's ever happened. Wait, wait, you Which think I'm w- not, I'm not saying is like a ding on her character. I'm just saying I would be shocked if Taylor Swift had dated a black person. I would not be shocked at all. Really? I really wouldn't. She, I don't think that I don't think that would be a big deal to her at all. Not at all. Interesting. Yeah. Oh wait, she has John Mayer. <laughs> John Mayer named uh hip hop's favorite white boy in one year. It was I can't remember what year it was, but he, there used to yeah, be like a Yeah, but you need cate- to stop. You need to stop. <laughs> no, there used to be a category called hip hop's favorite white boy and John Mayer was named it one year. John Mayer Hip hop favorite white boy. Okay, Gabby, do you remember when you made that fried chicken joke in front of Dorian DeBose and he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
I f- this is that I'm getting my spidey sensors are going. This is similar. Who is an artist you think John Mayer would work well with? Ooh, that's just the Reddit board I came up. Oh, okay, that, that came up right now. He apparently has a massive penis. Where you Isn't hear that, that nice? <laughs> I'm I'm clenching so hard to say why. <laughs> Don't. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not Don't. gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Don't. But apparently he does. And apparently Katy Perry said that he was a, a fantastic lover. That's very nice. I think that's beautiful. It's always nice to hear when someone's doing well. Um, People want him to work with uh, Leon Bridges. Very. Oh, yeah. Great artist. Yes. That could be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Keith Urban. Eh, I don't like Keith Urban that much. Why don't you like Keith Urban? <sighs> Too Urban. No, it's just I don't know if he's right for Nicole Kidman. Who's right for Nicole Kidman? You. Hey. Me. You could seduce Nicole Kidman. I could do more than seduce Nicole Kidman. Heartbreak feels good in a place like this. Is that a quote from something? That's a quote from her uh, AMC commercial. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's where I fell in love. Did I really make a fried chicken joke in front of Dorian DeBose? Yes, you did. I can't remember when that happened. I must oh, yeah, you did. And he literally goes, all right. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He still loves me. No, he does. He does. He's perfect. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. sometimes it's about finding community by dividing it. (laughs) You ever think about that? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the only way to know where the line is, is to snort it. (laughs) That's that's a good point. (laughs) Snorting the line. It's a good name of the episode. Yeah, snorting snorting the the line. No, we can't have that be the name of the episode. (sighs) This episode is gone. Every time it's just the two of us, Lucas, off the rails. It's a little, it's kind of, it's a little rough. Well, now you have to say something racist. Okay. I like your hair. (laughs) Well, don't touch it. (laughs) Oh, Lord. What else? Should we do one more recap and then listen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do do another recap. Oh, uh, one. Oh, I actually do have something I want to share, which is that I, um, uh, I did a sketch recently with, uh, the wonderful daddy who you guys may know from Instagram, uh, uh, on Instagram at Director Daddy. He's a wonderful filmmaker, uh, artist, uh, comedian. He does it all. But I, uh, we were in this sketch where I was pitching, like I was like a, a corporate person pitching this uh, Nike ad campaign that uses the N-word a lot. And uh, there was this line with the Nike logo, and it says, just do it, N-word. And... <laughs> Daddy asked me, he because I was going to be standing right in front of it. He was like, are you comfortable with this behind you? <laughs> and I was like, and I thought about it and I said, what do you need for this film? Mm. I said, what do, what do you think is going to make this 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 piece, this video as good as it possibly can be? And he said, I want it up. I was like, then I trust you. That rocks. Yeah. It was a great sketch. It was. I had really a great time. Really fun, yeah. I had a great time. But it was. I was really touched that he asked me what I was comfortable with. That's fair. It was. Nice. Re- he was. Yeah. I, I couldn't have had a better experience. It was It was so fun. It seems like he's such a great director. Oh, he's a good director. And a very He cool runs artist. a tight ship. Yeah. He's yeah. easygoing at the same time. He's, he's great. Yeah. He's wonderful. He also has a great laugh. He has a really good laugh. Let's see what else happened in January. January yeah. news. January news. Um. Okay, there was a lot of snow. I'm mm-hmm. hearing. Yeah. More on the so Israel Hamas youth. war. We did. Did you did you enjoy the snow? Did you enjoy a little bit? I liked the snow, although I didn't like how inhospitably cold it was. Oh, someone has their Nintendo January wrap up news. Oh. Curious about. I didn't even know they covered. Uh, curious about that. Yeah, there's a Princess Peach game. What do you think of uh what do you think of Princess Peach? I, I'm not a fan of royalty. I'm not a fan of monarch of wow. monarchistic governments. Um so you don't I think she should abdicate. She should abdicate. I think she should abdicate the throne. <coughs> Have you considered that's, a, that's one prisoner that's one princess you'll never see in a tunnel. Have you consider that means Mario won't be king. I don't think he wants to be king. He wants to be a plumber and help people. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that someone like goes into plumbing because he wants to be a king one day? That's true. The whole point of Mario is that he stumbles upon this world. He falls down the pipes and has to do everything, you know? 
he gets the hot girl just by being himself. Exactly. Just by being a little guy. I often wonder if they do anything more than kiss because. Well, like anal? <laughs> I know you wonder about that. I wonder because sometimes Peach will kiss him on the cheek and he'll like look like he's about to die. Like the air has like left him, which is so cute. But I'm like, <laughs> if you can't yeah. keep it together, how are you going to have sex with this woman? Oh, he oh he is premature ejaculation for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But it's so sweet. Yeah, his pipe's leaking. Oh. <laughs> and with that, let's go to listener submissions. <laughs> and with that. And with that, pipes leaking oh, all yeah. day long. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait, let me get my phone. Okay, so we have three. Hey, Meerkats. I keep hearing you talk about the Notable Words group chat. Oh, yes. So I wanted to submit my own Notable Words for your consideration. Ooh. Paraphernalia. Lackadaisical. Liquidity. Mm. Prestig... Prestidigitation? Yes. I How know did my... you know? It's a dirty little word. How do you... What does it mean? Whatever you fucking want, bitch. So hot. Gallivanting. Yeah. Well, we all know that. What do you think of those words? I think they're great. Yeah. I think th- I think they're great additions. Yeah. No, I've j- I just heard prestidigitation somewhere before. Mm. Like hippopotamonstrosis quipidaliophobia. Whomst? Hippopotamonstrosis quipidaliophobia. What does it mean? The fear of long words. Oh. God, that's that's, mean. that's actually that's actually true. But that's so mean to yeah. do. Then there's the longest word anti anti disestablishmentarianism. I actually I actually memorized how to spell it when I was like a little a n t i d i s e s t a b l i s h m e n t a r i n i s m. Love that I didn't ask. Yeah, I'm neurotypical. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're all neurotypical yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Neuropsychosis. Yeah, I haven't spent the last week just being obsessed with a productivity app. Oh my god, but no shit is is very good. It is so helpful. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. I've been like I've been looking at all the tutorials how to create a life OS, a life operating system. Fascinating. Oh my god. It's just it's revolutionary. What is a life OS? It's just like the way you have like a computer an, you know about OS's operating systems? Yes. There's my like yes. Microsoft, there's uh, Apple OS, there's different OSs and it's just it's a way of like organizing the different sort of parts of your brain online sort of like like i i started creating a page for my stand-up material and then i'm gonna have like notes for other things and a to-do list and it's just like just a way to organ an external hard drive for the brain awesome and i'm so excited about what this is going to do for me because it's already just like it it's already made me feel more creative and more just up that's it's so just, cool. it's, it's, yeah, it's been good. I love when you can get your brain together and get that yes. executive functioning kind of properly set. Oh my God. It feels great. Absolutely. Okay. But let me, okay, let's pull up some more submissions that you sent me. Okay. Here we are. Okay. Uh, I just got my wisdom teeth out and I'm planning meals for when I'm able to eat solid foods again. Any ideas? I've really been craving latkes. So if you have a recipe, Ooh. that would also be nice. Hope you're well. This is a great question. This is an I idea. like this is a this is one you can sink your teeth into. This is an ideal meerkats question. Yes. Okay. So, you haven't been able to eat solid food for a while. What would you go for? Not what you recommend, but what would you go for? Dumplings. Dumplings are every day. Soup dumplings. Mm, so I good. love I the Shaolong Bao does so much. Does so much for me. It does. It's oh my god! It's incredible. What about you? Uh, soup. Okay. Oh, actually, a really good celebratory meal for me is a seafood paella. Ooh. That is like up until I had hot pot for the first time, I would have said that's my favorite meal of all time. Oh, but hot pot is hot pot's another one. We hot recommend. pot, yeah. Oh my god, no. Um, and like I don't know how old you are, but getting stoned and then having hot pot, <gasps> so good. Although you, that is dangerous because there's times I need to like take a walk afterwards. Oh no, no, no! You so much. Food. No, definitely have a sober chaperone with you to be like, <laughs> no, take to have some water. <laughs> no, take no, a moment. no, don't eat all of that. <laughs> yeah. But oh my god, <sighs> it is so special. It is oh, I, I hot pot for sure. Um, yeah, like a good, 
something spicy like a good fried noodle, like pad thai or pad mm. cu, something like that. These are these are great things. These are really really good. Yeah, I would also say in terms of latkes, if you're craving latkes, yes. look up recipe blogger Melissa Clark from the New York Times cooking great. section. I would recommend having it with sweet chili sauce. I've never heard that. That sounds so good. Well, it's I have it with uh, like a bagel and cream cheese because if you think about it, it's all the same stuff as crab rangoons. Well, I mean, obviously without the yes. crab, but it's like it's dough, it's cream cheese, it's sweet. It's just it makes sense. I remember the first time I had crab rangoon. Oh, cool. there you go, crab rangoon as well. I feel like crab rangoon is one of those things where like, it's like the one good thing modernization has done. It's it's a thing that should never exist. Yes, it shouldn't exist. But uh, thank God it does. Yeah. It's like, much like the Jew tunnels. I mean, those should exist, actually. I hope they eat crab rangoon in there. We should get some delivered. <laughs> There's no way they'd go down there. It's shellfish. <laughs> do you think they, do you think they order seamless? They're that's like, a gr oh hey, my God, hey, that's so funny. Hey, we're under here. That's so funny. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, can you just go behind this wall? <laughs> Um, just actually don't call because we don't have follow the service. Yiddish. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, congratulations on being able to eat solid foods. That's You're great. Crush it. It's going to be an awesome time. That's beautiful. All, All right. right. We got one more. Yes. And this kind of alludes to something we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. Is it just me or is listening to a podcast, even though I have no idea what's going on and what they're talking about, really entertaining? Of course. It's, of course it's pretending it you have friends. <laughs> We are your friends. Don't say that. We are your friends. You have no friends. No. Na name one friend you have. Lucas Arnold. Yeah. This parasocial relationship your is. You're right. I'm not saying I have you as a friend. I'm saying all the listeners do. <laughs> I'm not saying uh, you have me as a friend. I'm saying that I have you sometimes. Yes. You have me around just if you kind of want to like. Yeah. Look at a hot piece of ass that isn't on your computer or your girlfriend or one of the 15 hotter female comedians who hangs out with us at any given time. If you just want to stare at a pair of beautiful boobies. I'm yes, here. I do. I do sometimes. Hey, and that's what you're here for, for no other reason. That's true. Yeah. That does remind me of like my, my favorite joke. Uh, I think I may have actually given you this joke for your roast battle with Aaron. Uh, I, I, I'm Aaron's best friend. Aaron's oh, my Aaron's friend. Aaron's my friend. You did give me that, and yeah. I was so grateful for it. That joke was so it crushed. Uh, I, that was my first roast battle that wasn't us. No, I had one more roast battle before that. Oh wait, who was uh, uh who was? Who was I don't want to say who, but she moved back to Spain recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anna Gasteyer. <laughs> Hitler. Christopher Columbus, right? Spanish, yeah. Spanish, yeah. yeah. Is it, I've really no, he was Italian, but he but he was on be, but he was working on behalf of the Spanish king. I think yes. I recently remembered that Spanish people are white. Yes, like people from Spain. Blue eyes, blonde, everything. They do it all. Which makes it so much funnier that Hilaria Baldwin pretended to be from Spain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I no, but uh, yeah, it's not. But it's it, it's yeah, it's. Hispanic appropriation, but not Latino appropriation. I told you that when when the Hilaria stuff broke, I called my dad. How you say a cucumber? <laughs> cucumber. <laughs> he used to like go to yoga. Oh yeah, and she was into him a little bit. Oh <laughs> yes, but what I more distinctly remember before she got with Alec, but what I more distinctly remember was when I called him about this news. He mm -hmm. was like, you know, actually, um, I knew about this because five years ago, the head of the yoga studio was like. You know, her name used to be Hillary, and she just came in one day and said, I feel like a Hilaria. That's my truth. And all of us were just like, okay. <laughs> Do you think she's hurting anyone? I've definitely heard some people say, like, it's kind of crazy that she would pretend to have an accent that, like, uh, people get, like, genuinely bullied for. Mm. But I definitely think it's on the low gradient thing of like hurt what do you think yeah i i think okay and maybe i this isn't my place to say but do you remember how everyone was like okay but rachel dolezal was actually doing a lot of good 
<laughs> I was I was gonna bring her up, but I felt I was on thin ice. Yeah. <laughs> you know she's on OnlyFans. I did know that. I mean, I don't subscribe yet, but yet. But it it, it could happen. Mm. No, but I I think it may be a thing that she, what she's doing is it's just kind of a weird thing for someone to do, but ultimately kind of harmless. Yeah. Well, what did you think of Rachel? Are we on first name basis? Yeah, you and Rachie. I'm not a fan of of the hair. <laughs> I don't think it's I don't think it's a good thing to do that. Yeah. But I <laughs> I found it very entertaining. Rachel Doll is all yeah. I I want her to try different ethnicities next. <laughs> Just let's see what it's like a rum springer. <laughs> yeah, let's see what Puerto Rican is like on her. <laughs> but she keeps the name. She stays <laughs> Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> and she doesn't she didn't do a voice. She did not do a voice. She did not put on a black scent. No. She was just but it was all visual. There was another oh God, woman. This Jess- is so awful. There was another woman, Jessica Krug, who pretended to be black, and she did put on a voice. Oh. She pretended to be Afro Latina, and she was actually like really white, to the point like whiter than Rachel Dolezal. Oh my God! And actually, one of the big feedbacks about her, like before it came out that she was pretending to be black, mm. was a lot. She was friends with a lot of like black academics, but she would like she would say things. That would make them like she would basically make her friends feel like not black enough, which is ironic for obvious reasons. But it's so funny. Her black academic friends would be like it's kind of a it's kind of a foolproof uh, way to protect yourself. Just turn it on them. Oh, it's just one of the cru- That's basically like a Trump like Trump in debates. Just being like, you're fat but when I talking about him. the economy. Just like. <laughs> You know, yeah. just like, no, I'm running this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, discussion on health care coming from an ugly bitch. He's going to win again, I think. Oh. Uh, uh. Ultimately, I think it doesn't matter who wins because they both have dementia. I think it does. I think that if Trump won, it would be worse. But I do think that. I don't think Trump has dementia. I think he's you can't you can't shake down what he's got to dementia. That's true. It's so much more and so much yeah. deeper. But I he I, has so many layers. I do think by the end of his term, he was not making real political. Decisions I think his secret anymore. is that he's bi. Why? Because he has a boyfriend. <laughs> to quote your joke about Obama. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious if he just <laughs> came out as bi? I am bisexual. <laughs> polyamorous androgynous nobody is more bisexual than me okay <laughs> okay he could win like that he could if he came out as bi the, oh my god bi I'm, and poly bi and poly and aero ace <laughs> i am asexual aromantic okay nobody is more asexual than me And yet I am also by if you have a problem, look in the mirror. <laughs> I would love to see him come out as <laughs> We we could have him on the show. <sighs> <laughs> I want to see him doing alt Brooklyn stand up comedy. <laughs> He'd do great. He would <laughs> he's so funny. He's so cool. They're not sending their best. He could start saying that about bisexuals. <laughs> I'm going on dates with these bisexuals. Let they're me tell you. They're not sending their best. They're not sending the best. <laughs> they're sending their mid. Wow. Okay, so what we've learned from today. <sighs> Jew tunnel's good. Zionism bad. Gabby's racist. And Trump, Trump is, is bi. bi. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank Lucas, you. do you have any final words? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think I do. <laughs> Uh, I, if you're in uh, the Connecticut state, <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm headlining uh, the Stress Factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Come see me February 22nd. Okay. I'm also in Connecticut at some point this week. I have some roast battles. Check me out on the gram. Nice. 
Thank you to all our listeners and come visit us on the Patreon. Yes, come visit us on the Patreon. We will be there and oh, we'll say it. <laughs> no. He won't. No, no, we won't. I promise. See you next time. I promise, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs>